Let's unwrap some client component mistakes and misconceptions in Next.js. Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we'll explore some common pitfalls and misconceptions about client components in Next.js. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. The use client component in Next.js seems simple, right? Well, like everything else in Next.js, it's not quite as simple as it seems. I'm going to cover some common misconceptions about client components in Next.js today, and misconceptions usually lead to mistakes. To borrow a phrase from Lee Robinson at Vercel, let's call these mistakes learning opportunities. And if I don't cover something that you've struggled with concerning client components, make sure you leave a comment to share your experience as well, because the struggle is real. Let's get started with misconception and mistake, uh, I mean learning opportunity, number one. A common misconception I've heard is that you can put the use client directive at the top of a component like we have here, and then your Next.js application will respond like the React.js we've always known. And if you put use client at the top of every component, you basically have React.js. That's not quite accurate, and it can lead to a problem that I'm going to demonstrate here. So if we run our code that has this and it uses the window object, the problem is that Next.js renders this code on the server the first time and delivers what it calls a React server component payload to the client, and then it matches as it hydrates the page. So you're going to have an issue because the window object does not exist on the server, it's only in the browser. So if I open up the terminal where my code's running, you can see the error that we get right here. It says the window is not defined, and you can see that reference, reference error right here inside the terminal. So how do we work around this? One fix you might consider is to check the type of the window, and if it's not equal to undefined, then you could actually use the window object. But this can lead to another problem. Let's look at how this works. So it's essentially the same code, except now if it's rendered on the server, it's going to render not available. And if it's rendered on the client, it's going to actually get the inner height value from the window object. So let's look at the terminal once again to see if we have an error. And there is no additional error. It looks like everything is running okay down here with our green checks in the terminal. But now let's go to the browser and we've got two errors. We do have the inner height value displayed up here, but let's see what the errors are. So if we look and we scroll down, really the first one's all we need to read. And it says the text content does not match the server rendered HTML. This is the React server component payload I was talking about. And it wants to match, it wants to compare to what it actually renders on the client side. And further, if we open up the dev tools, we can get just a little more detail here. I'll scroll all the way to the top and it tells us warning text content did not match. So the server rendered not available, but the client rendered 194, the value we actually wanted for the inner height. So right now, one problem is leading to another. How do we fix that? There is a page on the Next.js docs that's dedicated to what we just read in our DevTools console window, where the text content does not match server rendered HTML. And it says why this error occurred. It's because there was a difference between the React tree that was pre-rendered from the server and the React tree that was rendered during the first render in the browser, which is called hydration. So we have a hydration error, and that's fairly common. So ways around this, it gives some common causes first, but if we scroll down, it says possible ways to fix. And let's look at this first method. Now, I know it's cool to say you might not need use effect, but in this instance, you probably do need use effect. So let's look at the solution here using use state and use effect. Now it's only going to run use effect if it's on the client. So as you see in their ternary statement here, it's checking is client and it says this is never pre-rendered. So you don't run into that issue. Let's go back and fix our code. And we're back in VS Code. You can see I'm now importing use state and use effect. We are setting the height to use state and also have a set height function as we would with use state. Then inside of use effect with the empty array, so this only runs when the page first loads, 
we are setting the height to the window.inner height, and use effect is only going to run on the client. So now we should have no problems. Let's go ahead and check out our terminal here. Everything looks good. We have a green check mark. So now let's go to the browser and we'll go over to our page that's running. We'll close out DevTools, refresh, and yes, we've got our 194 value here as expected. And notice we had a quick flash of zero because that's what we set use state to in our code to begin with. So if we look back and close the terminal, we can see our use state is set to zero here when it first starts. So from this first misconception and mistakes we encountered, there's a couple of takeaways. The first is that we shouldn't try to access any type of browser API like the window object on the server because it doesn't exist there. And the second is we shouldn't really try to conditionally render based on the window object because it's going to cause hydration errors. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. You may be surprised to learn that three out of every four viewers, nearly 75% of all people who watch my channel aren't subscribed. So I just wanted to take a quick second and remind you to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And if you really like my videos, you can get exclusive content and support my channel even more by joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. Thanks for your consideration. And now back to the video. Another common misconception is that you need to mark every file in your application that will be a client component with the use client directive. And that is not the case. Let's look at my simple client component example here, and I'm importing counter, and counter is another client component. Let's look at counter. You can see it uses state. That's only going to happen in the client, but I didn't put the use client directive at the top of this file at all because I'm importing it into this client example file, and that essentially sets a boundary when you use the use client directive. So you don't need it at the top of every file. You're essentially putting a boundary in the tree and everything imported into the client component after that will also be a client component. Now let's take this a step further and if you will, maybe a little more confusing because you can also interleave server components with client components as long as they are the children of a client component. So notice, we're receiving children in our client example component here, and then we're rendering children here as we return the output of the component. And this will allow us to render a child that is a server component. It will be pre-rendered on the server. Let's look at the browser and see how this works. And I'm passing in a title component as a child. So here you see the client component H1 that I had. And now you see the counter component that actually works as a counter, but this title component, this is a server component. And if we go back to our code and we look at this inside of the page, we can see that our client example is wrapped around the title component, which makes it a child of the client component. And yet this is a server component. And now if we look at the title component, you can see I'm doing something that I just said would be a problem. I am actually conditionally rendering something based on the window object, but I can get away with it just for this example, but I do not recommend that you do this in your code. So I just want to turn the background dark green if it's a server component, and that's what you already saw. And I want the background to be Dodger blue if it's a client component. So now let's go back to our client component example. And instead of the counter, I'm going to select this and select all instances of the word counter and change this to title and then save the file. Now let's go back and look in the browser and you can see that we now have a client component that is title and a server component that is title. Now, if I refresh this, I'm going to get that error. So that leads me to something else. Actually, if we make a change in dev, it's not going to go back and re-render that on the server. That's good to know about client components because now you'll know you'll want to refresh to see how they would actually render. That's something that you might not think of encountering in dev mode, but it's pretty important because you might think I'm going to make a change and just save it. And yes, it works. Make sure you refresh the page to understand how your client components render, because when I do that, I'm going to have a problem. Now it just locked into what it rendered on the server and both are dark green. 
And back in VS Code, if we look at this title component, you can see there's not much to it. And we didn't declare use client at the top. So it could be a server component or a client component as we saw. So the takeaway here is that not every file needs the use client directive. Anything imported after that boundary you set with whichever component sets that boundary will be a client component. But likewise, you can still have children that are pre-rendered on the server. And an additional takeaway is that in dev mode without a full refresh, your dev environment is not reconciling that React server component payload with your client components. And we saw that when I was able to save the component and it rendered a blue background, and then when I refreshed, it actually rendered the dark green background. And the final misconception I want to cover is the idea that wrapping your app in a context provider turns the entire Next.js application into a client-side application, and that's just not true. This comes from not understanding that the children of client components can be pre-rendered server components. And this is the interleaving that we just learned about in the last example. Here we see the code from my blog and I have a providers file and it has the use client directive at the top. Now I bring the providers into my root layout on my blog and then you can see it as the children right here and the providers is wrapped around everything. So once again, I have a client component with providers, but the children can be server components. And that's exactly what we're doing here. One other thing to note is the suppress hydration warning, because when I'm using this for light and dark mode themes, you actually do have a mismatch. But when you expect that mismatch, using the suppress hydration warning is okay. If you're interested in learning how to apply this to your blog or project for light and dark mode, I have a separate video on that and I'll link to that right now. So this is complex and some say it's a mess. What do you think? Maybe you have some other client component struggles or misconceptions that you wanna share. Or maybe you have some thoughts on how Next.js could make this easier for all of us. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Hey guys, I recently started a Patreon and I'm already giving shout outs to Holy Coder, who is a progress provider and Eldad who joined at the senior member level. Also shout outs to all of the junior members that have joined. Thank you all so much. You're helping me reach my goals. And if you haven't joined, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. I've got exclusive content there that you won't find on YouTube, and I've also got early release content. Hope to see you there. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.